very good morning to you. Last Monday, we were challenged by the magnetism of the cross. Jesus stating, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. We understood that this was Hebrew idiom for crucifixion, a curse, a most terrible form of execution. We saw that despite the ugliness of crucifixion, Jesus, the Son of God, believed that through his crucifixion, people would be drawn to this cross because it stated God's unequivocal, amazing, sacrificial love for each and every one of us. Somehow we saw that the magnetism of the cross attracted us to God in Christ because, firstly, it appealed to our understanding. Yes, God must really love each one of us as if we were the only one in the world to love. Secondly, the cross appeals to our dignity as human beings. God does not force us into a loving relationship with him. He respects our free will. And so he attracts us by the, this amazing demonstration of sacrificial love. Now, thirdly, the cross appeals to our sense of moral obligation. A modern author has written a novel called Barabbas, which tells of the shattering reaction of this criminal. You will remember he was released instead of Jesus when, after he was released, wandered up to Golgotha to have a look at the man who was dying in his place. It would be a dreadfully sober experience to have someone die for you, and infinitely more sobering if he gave his life voluntarily because he loved you and wanted to make you a better person. One thing is sure, if you have any moral sense in you at all, your life can never be the same again. An Archbishop of Paris was preaching to a great congregation in Notre Dame. He told the story of three young men, worldly and godless, who wandered into the cathedral one day. Two of them wagered the third, that he would not make a bogus confession. He accepted the wager. The priest who listened realized what was happening, so when the pretending penitent had finished, he said, To every confession there is a penance. You see that great crucifix over there? Go to it, kneel down, and repeat three times as you look up into the face of the crucified, all this you did for me and I don't care a damn. The young man emerged from the confessional box to report what had happened and to claim the wager from his companions. Oh no, they said, first complete the penance and then we will pay the wager. Walking slowly to the great crucifix, he knelt down and looking up into that face, with its searching eyes of a grieved love, he began, All this you did for me, and I... He got no further. Tears flooded his eyes. His heart was torn by the pain of repentance. There his old life ended, and there the new began. Finishing the sermon, the Archbishop said, I was that young man. Whatever you and I think or don't think about crucifixes, there, have, there you have the magnetic appeal of the cross. Those two beams of wood teach us what no prophet, no philosopher or preacher can ever teach us. That God loves us, even us, enough to act in, firstly, a way that we can understand, 
Secondly, a way that appeals to our sense of moral obligation. Thirdly, a way that appeals to our dignity as human beings. And we know that because of what God has done, we can never be the same again. Many a man or woman has stood incredulously before the cross and cried out, God has done this thing for me, done it because he loves me and because he wants me to be a child of his. Do I really mean that much to God? Does he love me so desperately as to die for me? Yes, he does. And for you too. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cross. This cross that demonstrates in action how very much you love each and every one of us. Each one as if we were the only one in the world to love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Now may that love which was seen in our Lord Jesus Christ be seen in you and in me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.